today's review, we're going to be having a look at the new release, NECA Toys Predator Ahab, the Ultimate Edition. Based on his appearance in the comic series Fire and Stone, the Ahab Predator comes with some pretty cool accessories, including a fabric cape, an engineer trophy skull, and even an engineer gun. Let's get to measuring, figuring how tall the Ahab Predator is. I've kept the helmet on just for the reveal later and putting it right to the top of his helmet. Right there. The figure stands 8.3 inches in height or in centimeters, you'd be looking at 21.2 centimeters in height. What's neat really is that the Ahab Predator comes with some traditional accessories and some rather unique accessories to his specific release. Why don't we have a look at the one that we always seem to look at first, and that's the Plasma Caster shoulder mounted cannon that fits on the back, of course, of the Predator. Fits the same way as it normally would fit. There's a little clamp, there's a little tab, I should say, right there, and a little tab right there. Quickly looking at it, there's not really that much different between this one and say some of the other plasma casters that we've looked at. However, they've added this little tubing down below, which is the only thing on it that's a different color from the normal silver and dark gray that they've already put on it. There is some articulation. You can hinge this back and forth, and you can also rotate the top of the actual cannon here. To attach it, you're gonna go ahead and just grab the figure, flip it around. We can move its crimson colored cape out of the way, and there's a notch right there and there's a notch right up there. I always find it's easy to start at the bottom, work our way to the top. That also works successfully in the business world as well. Work yourself from the bottom, from the bottom, the corporate ladder, and work your way up to the top. I feel as if, though, while I'm doing this, I'm probably gonna pop the helmet off. The helmet is usually the easiest thing. There we go. The helmet's usually the easiest thing to put on last, just because when you are putting this on, you're probably gonna knock the head, the helmet off in the process, and I just so happen to have done that. So that's on the bottom, and then we can go ahead and fit that onto the top. Is it in there? It's not quite in there. Just move it over a bit. There we go. We'll go ahead and revisit the helmet. I didn't, I didn't wanna give it away, although I'm sure anybody who was interested in picking up this figure for themselves probably already knows what the Ahab Predator looks like. And there he is with the Plasma Caster, a staple, if you will, when it comes to Predator releases. I'm gonna put him down here for a second, as I do certainly wanna look at the other accessories that come included with the figure, one of which is this really neat looking spear. It's excessively long, and of course, with it being long, also inherits the fact that it's made of a thinner plastic, so you could be a little bit more careful, at least the bottom portion. The handle midsection is done in gold plastic and some rather nice looking uh, blades on the top. It almost looks like something you would expect the Klingons to be wielding. It's a lot taller than him as well if you factor in the length of the additional rod or spike down below. Um, it's, I almost would say it's even a head taller than the Ahab Predator. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then, of course, he has the necessary hands to be gripping those. He has this one gripping hand, for example, uh, that you can fit around it. All right, reach it around the other side, and uh, you can have him holding it. Although I do find this this hand, it's funny though, these hands here are softer plastic. I'll talk about those in a second. These hands, this specific hand right here, is of a harder plastic. So prying the hand is a little bit more trickier. You may even want to heat it up. And that's probably a bad idea. Probably won't even want to heat it up to pry the fingers apart. And in the process of doing that, I dropped the hand on the floor, but that's that's okay. We'll put that right there. 
the other accessories he comes included with. Now, these are some new things that we have not yet seen with a Predator release before, and that is an engineer gun. I had to do a double take looking on the back of the packaging to actually gauge which way it's supposed to go. I thought it went this way, then foolishly realized later it's supposed to be facing this way. There's a little trigger point down below. This is not the easiest thing for the figure to be actually holding at oftentimes including the hand that I just dropped on the floor. A lot of times it's really difficult to get a hand around this bridge, this curved area on the top, to get the hand actually in between there to reach the trigger. But still, nonetheless, it's a neat looking gun. We haven't seen this released before. I don't know if we will ever see it be released again, but still pretty cool. You can see that they've added some silver paint to an otherwise rather dark plastic mold Looks good though, I like it. I looked at this immediately and boy, that's an awfully large skull. You probably are saying to yourself, well, this is also an engineer skull. Taking some cues from the engineer gun, now we can look at the engineer skull, much bigger than a traditional human skull. This would be a perfect segue if I had a human skull in front of me, not a real human skull. Relax everybody, not a real human skull. But yeah, this is an engineer skull. A little bit bigger, same sort of proportions and features that a human skull would traditionally have. It's been painted in what looks to be dark gray plastic, and then they've dry brushed a lighter color, like a lighter gray on top of that. But it looks really good. He also comes included with his uh, little disc, his throwing disc, and here in this case, it's been cast in gold plastic. Normally it's like a dark black or dark gray plastic. Here though, it's in gold plastic. And again, it looks really, really good. Now, the, the problem with the gauntlets, I've always had an issue with trying to get them to fit onto the figure, the fingers of the figure. You can sort of get a couple of fingers poking their way through the holes to get them to hold it this way. But to line up all the fingers isn't something that seems all that successful. You could, of course, try to use this hand as well. And it's sort of the same idea, although I guess this one fits just a little bit more. Minus, of course, the thumb. This one fits actually a lot better. So we'll just use this as the existing hand, as the real hand that you would want to be holding the disc. Not as I would ever be displaying him with the disc myself, but uh, you do have that option also. Uh, what else does he have? Well, he has a couple of gauntlets. I'm not a big fan of these, I have to admit. He comes with two of these, and one instance in which we've actually got two variations of gauntlets that can both be removed from his forearm and replaced with the alternate one. Now, they look almost identical to one another, although if you can see it, this one here on the left is a little bit bigger than the one here on the right. Also, the big notable difference is the one on this side has three blades rather than the two blades that are on this one here. They work essentially the exact same way. Um, the, you just slide them really out. And if you are wondering, you cannot fit the third one, the third blade into this gauntlet. It just simply doesn't work that way. One thing I don't like about the gauntlets though, is that they just sit really loose inside. Now I understand what you're about to say. You're, well, if you put it on his forearm, they're not gonna be moving around too much on you. That's a valid point. A couple of little slots here on the side. Take the little notches that are also included on the opposing side and you snap this into place, just like that. It doesn't ever really feel like it perfectly stays in place. Often at times I just feel like it, it seems like when you are moving the figure, it pops off way too frequently. It also does have the problem too that if you have a hand there, the blade sort of gets in the way of that. Now, one thing I do have a problem with though with this, whether it's supposed to be something that's launchable or not, it, it falls out way too frequently. You may be more inclined to bring the figures, uh, the figure's arm forward, just so that this doesn't fall out. But I mean, gravity works against you, and often at times this will be dropping out way too frequently, a little bit too more, too much more than I, I actually do like. So he does come with those. I'm not, I don't like the fact that they do fall out as much as they do. Uh, before I also forget, we flip the cape up. He has a little point right here, right here, in which he does also include this little hook. Now this is something I almost completely forgot that the packaging had, 
and that just plugs into the back like so. And then you can take the spear and the spear can attach right here. Now, the big problem with all of this is it doesn't seem to allow for the cape plus the caster, plasma caster, plus the spear. You can move the cape sort of to the side, but it does feel like everything is bunching up. At the very least, I'm glad that the fabric in the it's fabric on a cape and not plastic. If it was plastic, it would be even more difficult to to move everything around. At least with this being fabric, the cape can move out of the way and you can't get the spear in place, but it does feel like it bunches everything up and usually gets stuck around the hair specifically. I guess you can kind of just pull this down a little bit and you could probably even tuck it behind the spear as well. Just like that, just to kind of keep it down a little bit. Keep it down a little bit. So there's all his accessories. And then of course, a couple of them that I didn't mention we can talk a little bit quickly about. He has some interchangeable hands. We already looked at the other one. The other one I dropped on the floor. I'm going to have to retrieve that. And then he also has this open hand as well. And that in a nutshell is all the accessories that come included with the figure. I'm going to go ahead and take this off because I know I don't want to clip it by accident and break the spear. And let's have a look at the Ahab Predator. Now this one's a neat looking design figure. Astute viewers can probably look at that and immediately think that, yeah, this figure looks exactly like some of the other Predator figures that we've gotten before from NECA Toys. You probably would be correct by that statement. I don't feel as if they've changed all that much between the torso, the lower legs, and the sides of the, uh, the two arms on the sides. But, of course, where Predator's uniqueness come is the different armors that they put on the figure. Now, this one has more simplified armor. Other than the fur skirt that is shown on either side of his, I suppose, loincloth, the Predator has traditional armor, but it's, it's colored in a dark, dingy gray, which works rather well with the helmet that is sporting over top of his face. It's a neat-looking armor because he's got the front mouth area that either looks like it's been decayed or it's something he has taken right off. It looks like it may have been finished completely on the front end over the course of whatever hunts it's been on. It has decayed. Now, I truthfully have not read Fire and Stone, so I don't know too, too much about Ahab Predator other than knowing that I like the look of this particular figure. He's got a much larger skull as a sort of pendant necklace on the front of his torso, a little bit larger than some of the classic jungle hunter predators, for example. Um, some nice scratchings that have also been added to the helmet. The helmet is painted in sort of the same color as the rest of his armor, although a little bit more of the silver starts to peek its way through. I do, again, like the little scratches, the chips and cracks. It shows age, and it shows progression in the hunts that the Ahab has partaken in. Of course, the reveal in all of this is that the helmet is removable, even though it did pop off at the beginning of this review. Just going to pop it off. And there's what the Ahab Predator looks like, taking some cues from Ahab from Moby Dick, missing one eye there. And a nice little touch. There's the interior of the helmet. Something that doesn't get seen from the front of the helmet is these red-colored uh, lenses on the interior. You can sort of see how it molds and fits its way onto the, he the uh, head of the Predator. One problem I do have, though, and I'm just going to put the figure down for a second, the way it fits on his on his head, I keep wanting to say helmet, but the way it fits onto his head, I don't feel like it sits completely flush. Um, you also have these little notches on the side that almost look like they're side breathing tubes. The problem I have with these, for actually two problems I have, the helmet doesn't, I feel, fit on his head well. As quickly as I feel like I've done a service and successful with putting on the helmet, it then pops off again. Um, it's a little tighter when you do push it all the way on like what I've just shown you. Here's where my big problem comes with this helmet. If you have it on loose, you don't have this problem. If you put it on tight, now the helmet's not going anywhere. But what I find has started to happen, if I take off the helmet again, right here, and not so much on this side, but I find on this side I'm starting to wear the paint. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a little bit of paint that's starting to chip off. And it's because these little areas on the sides, this one specifically, when you push on the helmet, 
I feel like it's pushing and scraping against the mold of the of the head. So you may be a little bit more careful. Also, too, when you put the helmet on, if you have it completely flush, you'll see a big gap on the top of his helmet. So you feel then more inclined to push it down. And this is sort of then where the helmet at times wants to fall off. And I guess this way, it's not rubbing up against it as much, but you're still running the risk of it rubbing against that plastic and eventually wearing that paint off. So you may decide just to want to completely leave it off or just leave it on. But it's very clear there that the paint is starting to chip right on the end there. Liking the head sculpt, like I said, going back to the head sculpt of Ahab, sort of does bear a resemblance, very loose resemblance to Ahab from Captain Ahab from Moby Dick, the novel. Um, I like how he's lost the one eye, and I don't know how he would have done this himself, whether he would have melted or burned the skin, or maybe the skin had been burned, and that's why he's lost his eye. It's a neat look, though, for the Predator, because you really only see one functioning eye. This would make things, for him, you would imagine a little bit more difficult. Still has the more traditional spotting on the top there, and he's got a couple of little scratches also there on the top. It's a neat, again, like I said, it's a really neat looking figure. I'm not really sure how I would display him, because part of me really does like this helmet. I guess if you are putting the helmet on, we'll just go back to this quickly. If you put the helmet on up, like if you put it up this way, up like that, and then you push it down, it does avoid pushing it all the way back and scratching it. So maybe you may want to stay clear of pushing it up like I just did and having that gap noticeable on top. I guess the gap is sort of telling you, don't put it that way. Keep it flush. Keep that gap between the helmet and the head a little closed, a little bit more closed than what it actually is. And there's the Ahab Predator. Okay, so let's go through his posability. Uh, his head rotates back and forth. Yeah, that's always something that normally happens with Predator figures. You rotate the heads and the plasma casters tend to pop right off. Something we can replace later. His arms rotate all the way around. Hinges out as well, and he has rotation in the bicep. He has a double hinge on the elbow. There goes the gauntlet once again, just push that down. And he has rotation in the hand. Has a rotation in the waist, as well as an upper torso ball joint. Lower torso ball joint on the legs, and the legs go forward, the legs go back. The legs have a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, double hinge on the knee. Nothing here, however, the feet rotate all the way around, hinges up and down, and also you have the ankle pivot back and forth. Before I also forget, this is something I almost completely forgot to touch base on, like other predators, Ahab also has the open console which you can have the readout display here if he sets auto-destruct. Luckily, this is actually one time where the auto-destruct hasn't been set. It seems often at times when we look at the Predator figures, the destruct self-destruct has already been automated and already been set. This very well might be the first instance in which a Predator figure has not set himself for self-destruct. And that's probably a good thing. Overall, I do like the figure. Ahab Predator has some neat looking design elements to him that make him a little bit more distinct than some of the other Predators that we've looked at before. Unfortunately, I find though that comes with this, a neat looking design, are some really rather strange design elements that NECA incorporated into the figure, namely gauntlets that don't seem to hold the blades properly, and of course a helmet that I feel like I am scratching the sides of the face on whenever I put it on his head. Now, Ahab Predator is a neat-looking release from NECA Toys, but it does suffer the same problems that I find that most NECA Predator figures have. Popping things in place, putting things in place, will ultimately fall right off if you move the figure too much. Plasma casters falling off the shoulder is given territory when you look at the Predator figures. It always seems to happen with every figure that I have. Ahab is no exception. However, I do find that he has one other problem that I didn't actually touch base on over this review. He has a shoulder plate, like a shoulder armor plate, that you can probably see here in Final Looks. It has a little notch to it that if you move the arm too far up, it ends up covering over the hole in which the top of the plasma caster is supposed to fit into. Now, 
if the plasma caster is already in place, you can probably guess where this is going to go. If you move the arm too far forward, it's going to pop that right off. Ultimately, at times, glue can be my best friend, and usually with my other predators that I have in my collection, I usually just glue them in place. So I don't have to worry about it. But there's other things on this figure that do pop off on random. Uh, the biggest one and my biggest problem with this figure is the caster, uh, the blades that go on his gauntlet. NECA sure gave you two of them. And they do give you the option as well of having the blades sliding in and out. But there's no real stopping point to them. Gravity can work against you very quickly. And if you have the arm angled too far down, the blades will slide right out. I'm not really sure why they did that. Unless the blades are supposed to have a launching look to them as if you're supposed to be able to fire out the blades at his prey the only other problem i have with this figure and it doesn't sound i hopefully it doesn't sound like i'm nitpicking this figure to death but i find that some of his hands are very awkward when it comes to holding certain accessories the hands are either way too tight of a plastic a rigid plastic that involves heating them up to mold them around certain weapons or in the case of the hand that's currently holding the engineer's skull the fingers are way too soft this took me a, actually a couple of different ways, a couple of different attempts to get him to properly hold the skull. It just seems like the fingers are way too soft and you can't get a good enough grip, if you will, on the skull that comes included with the figure. I also really like the engineer gun, but he, it's such a pain in the butt to get into his hand that I just left it off here in Final Looks. It was going to be in the figure's hands for Final Looks, but it was just too much of a hassle, so I just left it off. Take my opinions, of course, always with a grain of salt. I like this figure quite a bit from a design standpoint, but it does have some of the same problems that most of the NECA Predator figures will always have. Kind of goes with the territory that if you've collected these enough in your heyday or currently, you'll probably have the same angst that I have when it comes to this figure as well. Only taking that, like I said, with a grain of salt, I really like the look of Ahab Predator. It's just a shame that there's a lot of things on him that fall off way too frequently. If you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Ahab Predator, and I probably said Predator a whole lot here in Final Looks, you should be able to find it now currently in retail stores and comic book stores as Ahab is now available now. Now available now. Today, like I said, we were looking at the NECA Toys Ahab Predator. If for some off chance you wanted to go back, I don't blame you, and want to go and have a look at some of my other Predator figure reviews that I've done on this channel, fear not, there's a playlist just for that. Also, if you want to go back and specifically look at just all the NECA reviews that I've done, also don't blame you for that, there's a playlist for that as well. I'm going to have a whole look at uh, a bunch of new Predator stuff coming onto this channel, as well as some other cool NECA toys. So if you're into either one of those, you can de definitely be in luck. All of this, though, can be at your disposal as long as you make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below. That is crucial. That will guarantee you that when new videos are coming to this channel, you'll never miss out. And like I said, there's going to be a whole lot of new videos coming to this channel, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching, as you always do, guys, and I'll see you next time.